Hey y'all, how's it going? Welcome back to Siege Plate Channel. My name is Brooke and today is a very rainy day outside. So perfect day to film something inside and I am being so angelically lit from the front because today I'm gonna show you all of my seed starting equipment. I'm also gonna show you how I used to start seeds which is just as effective if you don't have as many seeds to grow. So. This is just from my experience over the years of starting seeds. I've started seeds in apartments. I've started seeds in my garage. I've started seeds now in my office. Um, the only seed starting experience I don't have is in a greenhouse, which, you know, we can all dr have dreams, you know? So if you've never been here before, my name is Brooke. Welcome to Seed to Plate channel. We talk all things urban and suburban gardening. Um, I have a full-time job in tech. I garden and create content um, as a hobby that I really enjoy. So hit the subscribe button if you want to come hang out with us. Hit the like button if you liked it. If neither of those apply to you, then that's cool too. Feel free to let the algorithm bring you back. Now, I also want to say if you are new to starting seeds, and that's how you ended up here, um, know that I have two other videos that would apply to you. Um, one of them is the difference between seed starting mix and potting soil. The other one is what seeds I'm starting. And there's another one actually, there's a third one. There's seed packet defined where we define all the things that they say on seed packets that nobody freaking understands. So. Go check out all those videos if you're new to seed starting. I will link them down below. Let's get started. <laughs> okay, y'all. So, this is part of my seed starting setup. Now, a few things you notice going on here. This is just a basic metal rack from Amazon. Not a big deal. Not crazy expensive. Um, you don't necessarily need these. I would just recommend having something underneath your seedling trays. Um, and I literally used to put them on a towel on the carpet of my floor. Um, so speaking of trays, these big long trays right here, these are called 1020 trays and you wanna make sure you get the ones without the holes. Now, most seed smaller trays will fit inside the 1020 trays. Let me show you. So this is a little six cell tray of peppers that are germinating. Um, which is very exciting. Now, this tray specifically is from uh, Modern Grower and Epic Gardening sells them. Um, I'm just starting to get really good root development on some of these, so I'm able to actually like review them. And I can confidently say that the roots on these plants are doing really, really well. So the reason I like these trays so far, a few of you have asked me to give your thoughts on these trays. Here's the deal, they're not cheap. Um, they're definitely an investment. I started with with much cheaper trays than this, but here's why I like them. Okay, they have these open sides and they have a really fat open bottom. So when you're popping these out to either up pot them, you're disturbing the roots a lot less. Now the other thing is because they have all of this great airflow, a lot of oxygen is gonna be able to get to these roots, which is a really good thing during the seedling stage. Um, and then finally, the biggest difference, well, one of the biggest differences is that because this isn't fully enclosed, your roots aren't going to spiral. They're actually going to grow down, even if it means they're growing in water. Now, let me explain that. <laughs> so when you hear bottom water, what that means is there's water down in here. That's why this tray has no holes, okay? So what happens is it soaks up water from the bottom, which develops really strong root systems. Um, so that's kind of the whole point. So you wanna have a tray that you're gonna put your soil and your plants in that has holes in it, and then this tray should not have holes in it, and you should be watering from the bottom. One of the reasons you wanna water from the bottom is so your seedlings don't get moldy. Um, so a couple things can happen. You can either get moldy seedlings when you water from the top, um, or you can move the seedling or it can sink and then your seed isn't gonna germinate. So that takes care of the conversation about the smaller seed trays, but what happens when you need to up pot them? I invested last year in these seed trays, or I'm sorry, these pots. These are three, or these are either three or five inch nursery pots and they have small holes in the bottom and this is what um, I will pot up my tomatoes and peppers. I like to plant 
pretty mature seedlings when I plant out my garden. And so in these 10, 20 trays, 18 of those pots will fit in here. Um, so my seed starting setup doesn't look super full right now. It will be overflowing into the floor <laughs> here before too long. Now, another thing I like to keep handy is a spray bottle. Um, the spray bottle I find really valuable to germinate small seeds like flowers and herbs. This oregano is a really good example. Oregano seed is super tiny. Um, so having the ability to make sure it's moist on the top until they germinate is a really, really good strategy for small seeds like herbs and flowers. So I always keep my water bottle handy while seeds are germinating and then I water the seedlings by filling up the tray. Now let's talk about these lights. These are actually just shop lights. <laughs> these are not very expensive and they work great. Um, they're very very bright. All of my seedlings grow really really well. There's those peppers again. Here's some uh, tomatoes that are coming up that are doing really really well. Now I will say the only thing I don't like about these lights is you have to bring your seedling up towards the light. So these are all of my tomatoes, like my determinants and my indeterminants. Um, these are all very, very close to the light. So that is one thing to keep in mind with whatever your setup is, um, is your proximity of moving the light towards the seedlings or moving the seedlings up towards the light. You want your, you want to start your seedlings as close to the light as you can and then move them down or vice versa um, so that the seedlings don't get leggy. Leggy seedlings are not something you want to deal with. Leggy seedlings, they can sometimes be saved. Um, I'll talk about more, more about that in a couple of weeks, but basically tomatoes, eggplants, and tomatillos, those can usually be saved if those get leggy um, because they have the ability to basically make more roots. But other ones, not so much. So you wanna be really careful not to let your seedlings get too leggy. If you're only starting a couple of trays of seedlings, I'm gonna share with you what I did when I was still in apartments. This is a construction hood just from Home Depot, um, and it has a clamp on it. Um, so this clamp is like really, really strong. And then I got a daylight bulb to put in this. So let me show you the actual light, what it looks like when it's plugged in. So this is what the light looks like. It's just really strong daylight. So this was a lot cheaper to invest in than investing in this whole setup when I first started seeds. And the cool thing was, I just found pictures of this the other day, so I'll post them up here as I'm talking about it. What I used to do was I used to put my seeds kind of by the by my uh, sliding glass door in my apartment, and then I would take this clamp and clamp it to the blinds so that I could move it up and down. Um, and it worked great. That's how I grew gardens for like two years, and I started everything from seed. So with that, you can make your seed starting setup way cheaper just by doing something like that. Um, but when you get to the level that we're at here, <laughs> things start to change a little bit. Now let me show you another piece of equipment that I actually didn't use this year for the first time, but I've used in years past that um, some people use. So this is a heat mat and heat mats are meant to heat up your soil to like a very uniform temperature. I would recommend doing this if you're not seeing a lot of traction with your seedlings or if your seedlings are kind of in a drafty place. The room that we're in right now is actually my office. I literally work here every day. I'm on my lunch break right now. <laughs> um, but my seedlings in here stay plenty warm. We keep the house anywhere from 68 to 70 degrees during this time of year. And so all my seedlings are plenty warm. However, last year I started my seeds in the garage and I definitely needed that those heat mats underneath everything so that the soil was warm enough to actually germinate. You can accelerate germination by using a heat mat. So for example, my peppers, I wanted to see if they were gonna germinate this year without a heat mat. It definitely took them a couple extra days to you know really get going um, because they didn't have that extra heat source. So heat mats are one of those things that like, do you need it? Uh, it depends on where your seeds are. Um, my seeds were near a really drafty window a couple of years ago, uh, that same sliding glass door, <laughs> and I couldn't afford a heat mat, and so I'm, I'm actually not advising you do this. This is a fire hazard. I took a heating pad, <laughs> like, for your body, and I wrapped it in a towel, and I turned it on, 
um, just to give the soil a little boost and I would turn it off after a couple of hours. I never left it on while I wasn't home. And I'm not recommending you do this, okay? But it did make my seedlings pop up a little bit faster because they were right next to that really drafty window. The last thing I wanna show you with my seed starting setup um, is a little bit of like an efficiency thing, but it keeps me honest. So this right here is a light timer. So it keeps the time and then it has one side for things that are automatic and one side that's always on. Um, the always on side is where I would put my heat mat if I was using one. The switch side is where I have all of my lights. So all of my lights um, are on a 12 hour timer. Now everybody kind of has their own theory in regards to how much light you should give your seedlings. Some people start it off really aggressive at like 16 hours and then back down. I prefer to keep mine right at 12 hours and then I will decrease it down to 10 hours because that's a maximum amount of light my seedlings are probably ever really gonna get, um, especially in the new space. We'll hit it. Um, but we're, they're not, I don't, I don't plant out in a field where they literally have 12 hours all day, right? There's obstructions, there's fences, there's stuff. So with all of these plants, I want to make sure that they are used to the sunlight that they're actually going to get. Um, again, this is just from my own trial and error over the years and also what I've been able to get myself educated about. It's always worked for me. Um, and then you'll go through a hardening off period, you know, in the week or two before you're gonna plant out, um, which is arguably the worst, worst time to start seeds <laughs> is when you have to take them all outside, bring them back in, take them outside, bring them back in. It is like mind numbing. Now, the other thing that I will bring into the seed starting setup before too long, to be honest with you, um, is a fan. Now, it needs to be an oscillating fan. And the reason that I'll bring a fan into this situation is to get a little bit of air movement. So with seedlings, you want to kind of, you're basically simulating an environment outside, right? So we have the water, we have the light, but the other thing is air circulation and wind. Um, so cell walls actually strengthen when they move. Um, so if they never move, so let's just create a scenario where you've never had any wind or air circulation on your seedlings. You put them outside, all of a sudden it's windy. They're so weak that they just topple over. Now, I've literally done this. I have done this. <laughs> and it's really disappointing <laughs> when it happens. So um, I will bring a fan in here that will oscillate and just give them a little airflow, nothing crazy, but that will build way stronger plants, which is what we want. We want really, really strong plants um, so that, especially here in Central Texas, we get some gnarly storms in the summer, thunderstorms that will have wind and rain and lightning. And so I want my seedlings to be as ready for that as possible. So that's the other element that I will bring in here at some point. If you're not starting that many seedlings, a overhead fan might work. Just running that and getting some air circulation here, that could also work. So that is my seed starting setup. I think there's lots of different ways to accomplish this. There's lots of different ways to do this. You can get a really super fancy setup. You can kind of jerry-rig it and MacGyver it a little bit like I used to do back in the day. Um, but I think as long as you follow the same basic principles of like bottom watering, you know, keep in mind water, your closeness to your light source, your air circulation. I think as long as you keep those basic principles in mind, um, you're gonna do perfectly fine. Um, so. If you have any like crazy tips or anything you've done that might be unconventional that other people could learn from, leave that in the comments. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Happy gardening and we'll see you next time.